Hi, James here. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can strip uh, a Technics SL Mark II turntable back to the faceplate. Now, I've been getting a lot of emails and questions, um, people asking, you know, how do I get the faceplate off of a Technics turntable um, to paint it? Well, basically, you can't. It's not a case of taking the faceplate off the turntable, it's a case of taking everything on the turntable off the faceplate. Um, the faceplate on the turntable isn't just something you can just unscrew and remove. Um, it's That is actually the main part of the turntable. Everything is bolted to the faceplate. Um, so if you want to paint it, you have to basically take everything off the faceplate. Uh, now it's quite complicated, but if you just follow a few steps and, you know, remember where you put the screws, bear in mind that, you know, you may have to write a few things down as well, you'll be fine. Okay, now, first thing here is I'll just grab a couple of these. Now, I've got loads of these bags here. They're just basically little cheap resealable bags. And I've wrote on there um, power circuit board. I've got, like, um, main circuit board, um, 33, 45 start and stop and power switch. Uh, pitch fader. I basically just wrote um, on the bits of paper in the bag what I'm going to be taking the screws out of. And then as you go, when you take the screws out, bung them in the bag, seal them up, and you won't lose them. Um, another thing is not just because you might lose them, but also if you're going to be stripping it off and painting it, you know, chances are you're not going to get it all painted in one day because you're going to have to allow for time between coats. Even if you do manage to get it all done in one day. You know, you're still you're still on about stripping it apart for at least six hours. So in that six hours, you're going to be walking away from where all the bits on the turntable are, and you're going to go and paint it. And when you come back, you might have forgotten where all the screws go. So at least that way, you know where they all go, and they're stored somewhere safe. Okay, um, now you're going to need a few basic tools to do it. So um, let me just show you some of the tools you're going to need. Right now the tools you're going to need for this uh, are basic tools that you should just have laying around the house. Uh, basically a massive selection of screwdrivers. You just need all sorts, big ones, small ones, Phillips, flathead, whatever. Just grab a massive handful because believe me you'll probably use them all. A um, pair of pliers, very handy. A pair of side cutters, you're probably going to need those to cut cable ties, such like. Um, a sharp craft knife, you may not use this but I think you might need it so better to grab one. Um, believe it or not, a soldering iron. Um, you're going to need one of those for this. Um, some solder, obviously, and you might need a pair of scissors. You might not, but you know. Then again, it's better to have it and not need it than the other way around. Right. So there you go. There's a few of the basic tools you need. Uh, now, it's not difficult to do this, but I will say this. Okay, keep your head screwed on when you're doing this because you're going to have to take a lot of bits on and off of this turntable, and if you forget something you know, you, you might forget how it goes back on. Now, if you're really worried about doing this, what I would recommend is do one at a time. If you've got two turntables, do one at a time. And then, at least then, if you forget how something goes back on, all you have to do is rip the other one apart and look at it and go, right, okay, yeah, that's how it went on, you know, done. Um, so, yeah, if you're really not confident or whatever, you know, do one at a time. Right, so there we go, so let's get started. Um, first of all, I'll go and get the turntable, and I'm going to be doing this on a bean bag. Now, I would recommend you do it either on a bean bag, on your sofa, or on your bed, or something soft that you can turn the turntable upside down onto. So, make sure you've got something soft, and don't just put it straight on the floor. Right, okay, first thing you need to do is take off everything off of this turntable that's not screwed on. Okay, that would be the slip mat, the platter, the cartridge, the counterweight, the adapter, everything, get it off. Right now, the first thing you actually need to take off is this plastic cover here. Um, and to take that off, it's one, two, three, four, five screws around the outside. Just take those out and that cover should come straight off. Now, I'd just like to add at this point, this is completely obvious, I know, but I've got to say it. Make sure you've unplugged it before you do this. Okay, so I've got all the screws out here and this is where your first bag comes in handy. So you've got plastic cover. Uh, excuse my spelling, I'm dyslexic. And bung the screws in there, like that, and then seal that up. And that's your first bag of screws. Okay, take that off. Right now, if we just get a closer look at this. Right now, first of all, there's a couple of plugs you need to take off. Um, one of them is here at the front, and that is for the buttons here and the power switch. So take that off. Um, the 
plug here for the pitch fader needs to come off so pull that off and the lamp at the front as well so take the cover of that off well now just a quick note um, this component here uh, has a bit of thermal compound underneath which is that white stuff and it makes quite a mess as you can see there so be careful with that right so now you've unplugged those it's time to flip the turntable upside down um, so I'm going to recommend using a bean bag because it's probably the softest thing you can put it on but you could also use uh, put it on your sofa if you've got like a soft sofa or on your bed or something soft that it's not going to damage the tone on um, now this is my furry bean bag and I'm just going to tip it upside down onto here like so right now you need to take this bottom off so the first thing you need to do is unscrew all of the feet Right, okay, once you've taken the feet off, you now need to remove all the screws from the bottom. And if you don't know how to do that, and you want some more information on that, there's a link in the description to another one of my videos where I go into more detail about taking these out. So if you're unsure, check it out. Right, okay, so once you've got all the screws out, you can just peel this rubber piece off the bottom here, which sometimes is a bit difficult, but most of the time it comes off fairly easy. Now, pull the audio cables through this hole in the rubber piece, and keep those out of the way because uh, that's the first thing that's going to come off but the power plug you can't get through well, now the next thing you need to do is remove this plastic piece off the bottom here um, it's very brittle so you've got to be very careful now I'm just going to show you quickly where the screws are let me just take this camera off which takes about five centuries because this isn't my normal tripod come on, here we go right now, looking at it from above okay, you've got a screw there you've got a screw there you got a screw there, got a screw there, not those two, they hold the hinges on, a screw there, a screw there, and one there, okay? If you take out all of those screws there, then um, you'll be able to get this plastic piece off. Right, now again, if you want any more information on how to get this off, okay, again, link in the description, there's another video which will show you in more detail how to get these screws out for this thing. Right now, if you've got all the screws out and you've got all the right screws out, this thing should just come straight off and uh, pull the cables through. Now, you won't get the power cable through because um, on the British model, typical British, we have a massive plug so it won't go through that hole. Uh, the American one or the European one might go through because it's a smaller plug, but on this model, it won't. So, uh, we'll just leave that off for the time being. Um, anyway, the first thing you've got to take off is the tone arm. And the reason why that's the first thing, it's the most likely thing to get damaged. So take it off first and it's least likely to get damaged then. So let me just move the camera and I'll show you how to get that off. Right now, to get this piece off, uh, there's three screws. There's one there, one there, and one there. Uh, you need to take these three screws out and this piece should fall straight through. Um, so before you actually take this piece out, also there's a little earth strap here. I hope you can see that and it goes to one of the screws on the pitch fader so make sure you take that screw out as well before you take this out so I'm actually eating my lunch while doing this not something I'd recommend but hey I'm hungry right now once you've removed all the three screws and you've taken off the little earth strap from this side of the pitch fader uh, if you lift up the face plate now okay you should leave behind this part here which once you pull the cables through is the tone arm assembly okay and that's the whole unit there so what you can do is, is just put this whole bit aside and um, make sure you put it somewhere safe okay don't just leave it on the floor somewhere where it can get trod on or sat on because this is really delicate and it will break very easy